Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out a new feature in Unity 2018.1 called the Shader Graph. Uh, now again, this is only available, at least as of the time that I write this, or record this, uh, in the newest beta of 2018.1 beta. And on top of that, you need to go ahead and make a download. That download is available in this Unity forum thread, uh, which I will link down below. I'll basically come on in here, uh, download the linked file that's available at some point in time. Where'd you go? Uh, here we go, download that sample project available right there. I have already done so, so we'll just head over to my downloads folder, uh, available right here. Uh, it is lightweight and shader graph. We'll just grab a copy of that and drop it somewhere, like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and fire up a copy of Unity. And again, you need to have Unity 2018.1, uh, which is currently in beta or higher in order to follow along to this. And the other thing to keep in mind is this is a coming soon feature, so it is not fully fleshed out by any definition. So we'll just go ahead and open that up. Uh, I dropped that on my desktop. There it is. All right. Let's open that guy. And continue. All right, I'm not sure how many files it's gonna to need to convert, so I'll just go ahead and pause while it's doing this bit. It probably won't take long, but nobody enjoys watching a progress bar progress. So there we go, we've got it loaded in. It took about two minutes, I'd guess, on the whole. And now let's take a look at a shader graph. Now what exactly is a shader graph? Well, it's a visual way of building shaders. Uh, it's becoming, uh, this is kind of a weird thing that's happened. This used to be very prevalent back in the age of uh, CG shader, shader language, and then it kind of went away. And then lately game engines have been re-implementing this system, and it's nice to see it kind of coming alive. What it allows you to do is build basically graphs of nodes, sort of like, um, uh, Unreal Engine's blueprints, um, and basically create your shaders that way. Now keep in mind this is under development, not all the functionality is there, uh, but it is already a really great start. So if you want to get started with it, go ahead in your project, go ahead and click create, and what you want here is shader graph. Like so, it will create a shader for you, my shader graph, like so, and click it, and it brings up the editor. I will maximize full screen this guy, there we go. And how you can what you see here, the default is it's created as a physical base rendering master node here. And what you can do is pretty much compose it by anything on the left hand side is an input, anything on the right hand side is an output. Uh, this is a final output and you can see the end result over here. So let's show a very, very, very simple example. Go ahead and just create another node. And what you probably often want to do here is create a just a straight up texture connection. So we'll go ahead and create a input scene uh but, but not seen my bad texture and we want to have a sample texture 2d now in doing that we could have also gone obviously and searched and filtered down for the result we want so here we go we're going to bring in a texture click over here we can so we could either drag in and pin to this connector over here or we can click this guy right here and actually select our connector let's, uh, let's expand this guy out a bit and we'll go ahead with this uh bricks map there so you see, we've got our brick texture down here. You can preview it. You can get rid of the preview if you so wish to save some space. And then you've got your output channels. You can output the uh, RGB or alpha of that image on its own. Um, or in this case, I'm going to take it all and we're going to hook it up to the albedo layer of the PBR. And there you go. Boom. You have uh, your texture hooked up. And this is basically all that's required to map in a normal texture. And on the topic of normal, let's create another node. Texture, it's going to be another um, sample texture 2D. We'll open one up again, and we will bring in the normal for that one. Uh, we will create a new node, or we can just drag this off like this, and it'll automatically ask us what kind of node to create. And we're gonna create a normal, like so. Oops, that's the wrong one. No, that should be right, why aren't you working? All right, I'm going to create the wrong kind. Let's do that again. Normal. Yeah, we'll do a strength one. No, it's not it. All right, I'm doing this wrong. Out. Normal. That's not normalize.
normal. All right, now you're ticking me off. But we'll connect it up. No, it's normal strength I want. I don't know why this isn't coming out the right color. Oh, I know why, I'm being an idiot. What I wanna do here is change this out from default to normal. Sorry, that's what you were watching here. And then what I wanna do is drag it out to a normal strength. That's why it was coming out as color channel as opposed to actually as a normal map. And here you see, uh, we can define the strength of the normal. We could actually do this over time if we so wish, but I'll just do it to say half strength, 0 0.5, like so. And then we'll connect that one up to the normal channel. And pretty much so it goes. You can change these things out on the fly and you'll see the result over here. We can um, make changes on the input. We can do a lot of um, fun really kind of funky stuff actually. If we go ahead here and let's say um, procedural noise, simple noise. So we got that noise going on and then we'll drag that into the cinematallic channel. And we can also go ahead, so scale it. It's coincidentally, you can zoom in and out like so. You can pan around using the middle mouse button. So let's change that out to one, uh, 15, yeah, 25. There we go, nice cloudy noise coming out. And you can see the results over here immediately as we do it. At the same time, we could have this value actually being generated. So let's go ahead and do a uh, random range. So like that, and our minimum is say 25. I hate the way it doesn't delete by default. And the other thing you're gonna find is that things are labeled as X, Y, and Z constantly, uh, even if it makes absolutely no sense. And then we're gonna bring that in to set our scale randomly, like so. And let's do that time. Coast time to feed the seed. And there you see we've got simple noise flickering over time and you can see the direct result of it over here on your shader. So, oh, that's way too big. That's why it's looking weird. Well, weird in a relative sense. So you can see the, the change being done. Actually, let's go back, it looked better the other way. I hate getting rid of that zero. I really hope they change that over time. There you go. So you're seeing like a static type noise being generated over the mesh as time goes on and kind of just scratching the surface of what you could do with this. But essentially what you're doing is building uh, your shaders, but you're just building them using this flowchart graph form as opposed to, um, you know, GLSL or HLSL scripting. And you see there are a number of different nodes here. So let's just quickly go through some of them. So you got uh, artistic blending, masking, normal, utility, and each one in turn has, you know, drag down there so we could play with the hue, the saturation, the contrast, etc. of colors, for example. Uh, you got your different channels for splitting, combining, swizzling, uh, input. Uh, we've been using a lot of texture input. We could do input from the scene, so we could bring in the fog settings from the scene, uh, an object from the scene, uh, etc. Uh, geometry. My understanding is some of the geometry stuff is currently missing. Um, so I don't think you can do displacements this way yet. Uh, you've got basic over here, uh, get out of the inputs. Uh, master, which is the, uh, the end result. So you need to be PBR or unlit out. Oh, that's this guy over here that we ultimately spit out to generate this guy. Um, you've got your m different math settings over here. I think we already did procedural, a couple utilities, uh, UV settings like so. So you can do some really cool things very easily drag and drop out of the box. And the last thing to really show you here is this preview could have been picked. So you see the mesh, there is none. You get this default sphere, spherical mesh here. I uh, can click down here and instead pick one from your scene. Uh, so for example, cube, like so, or go one step further and bring in say a train. Now what I found, I don't know how to actually control the viewport on this guy. So when it gets off center, I don't know how to pan up. And I, I hope it's just an, an oversight on the current implementation, or I just simply don't know how to do it. But the traditional panning isn't supported here. So some non-standard meshes, your previews are gonna look a little weird, uh, which is unfortunate. It just basically seems like the origin is off a bit. It doesn't show up centered here, and there doesn't seem to be a way to actually pan an object. So again, I hope that is something that is added eventually. I got the ability to add properties up here. And then finally, when you are done, go ahead and click save and
your graph is saved. And again, you can come back here, open it back up and edit it at any time. So that is the new shader graph coming to uh, Unity. It's working with their new program programmable pipeline. Those kind of part and parcel work together. Uh, it's cool stuff, actually. Um, you know, it's one of those things that's becoming more and more common in game engines. Unreal Engine, I believe, has its own visual shader system like this. Uh, Godot has one in the 2.x branch coming in the 3.x branch. And it's cool to see Unity is getting one as well. The nice thing about this kind of setup is it requires no programming or at least no traditional scripting, and it really kind of rewards experimentation. So um, you can actually create some very cool shaders that you might really struggle to create, you know, if you don't understand shader programming to start with. You don't really need to understand shader programming that much to make this work. And if you've already got experience in um, Cycles Renderer and Blender or Shader, uh, Hypergraph, I think it's called in Maya, the shader, the shader technique that we're seeing here is very common in most content creation systems today. So this seems to be kind of moving towards the future. Uh, very cool new feature. Again, uh, I will link the down the scene down below that you use to get started. And once again, you do need to use Unity 2018.1 beta to um, have the uh, new programmable pipeline that this actually depends on to run. But it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, obviously, all beta stuff, not ready for use in production, so you have been warned. But uh, this is Shader Graph coming to Unity. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Is this uh, an appealing way to design shaders, or are you the traditional, I'm going to stick to my script? Or do you let other people do the shader work for you and you don't care either way? So that's it for now. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, all right, I will see you all later. Goodbye.